Good morning, Grace Gate Harvest Church. Uh, this is Pastor Ziggy again uh, sh um, to share with you. I'm excited to share with you the third part of this series on the family. And uh, if you are joining with us for the last two Sundays, I really hope and pray in my heart that somehow you have been blessed and you have been touched by the Lord and you have been empowered by the Holy Spirit as you have received the words of the Lord uh, these past few weeks. 
and today whatever you are you are uh, going through uh, i believe that the lord is always there for you and for each one of us as a family and as a church so together we gather this sunday morning you know uh to worship god and to give him the glory that he deserves so this morning you know i i rejoice with you you know i rejoice with you in every you know, in every blessing, in every uh, peace and, and, and the touch of God upon your life. You know, I am, I am so delighted to stand uh, in front of you today to share the Word of God. So let, can I invite you to pray? Uh, let's just, just join together our hearts as we, as we come to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for how you are moving sa aming mga buhay, for how you are providing for our daily needs. And we believe, Lord God, that your hands are always ready, not just to touch us, but to give us what we need day after day. And your ears are widely open to listen to our cries, to listen to our prayers. So therefore, Father God, today at this very moment, as we gather together as a church and as a family, Lord, um, we just want to hear more from you. And, and we commit to you, Lord, our families, as this is the central uh, focus or our theme for this month. And uh, I know, Lord God, that uh, you are, you know, you are moving Little by little, you are doing something, Father God. Lord, one step at a time, at a time, in every household represented, Lord God, in this, you know, in this broadcast, in this uh, <clears throat> online uh, worship gathering. So, Lord, I declare that once again, you're just going to pour out your power and your glory to each home, to every parent, to every children to you know to to your sons and daughters father god so lord we open our hearts lord to you speak to us empower us and fill us with the holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen okay <clears throat> i just want to make a quick recap so that for those who have just tuned in and uh maybe you're wondering uh uh, what uh, this topic is all about but I just want to make a quick recap so that you can uh, you know you can be on the same page now uh, we're talking about we are on the story of Joseph referring his personal journey in his relationship with his family so in session one I talk about that there was a question that that Rose uh, saying or asking why you know we were born Bakit ba tayo ipinanganak? And that talks about our purpose. And I've said that you were born to serve the Lord. And that's the whole picture of the whole session. You know, that God has a blueprint uh, to each one of us. <clears throat> and uh, in session two, uh, it talks about our identity. Who are you? You know, last Sunday, uh, I've uh, kept on asking that question. Who are you? Who do you think you are right now? So if you know, and I've said that if you know who you are, you can serve God anywhere, you know, anywhere where God would bring you. So <clears throat> a little fast forward, uh, because I'm going to skip uh, chapters 40 and 41 okay, in Genesis. And uh, a little fast forward, I'll, I'll, I'll be giving you some rundown about what happened during those uh, periods. You know that he was yes we ended last week that we, he was tempted with the uh, with uh, by the wife of Potiphar day after day but Joseph stood on his conviction you know the grace of God was there every time that he was tempted you know he, God made a way out for him to to run or to flee right so he's because he is loyal to his boss he don't want to do anything against his boss and most of all, he is loyal to God. He don't want to, to grieve God. He don't want, you know, his relationship with God to suffer. And, uh, but the last part of the story, he was thrown into the prison because of the false accusation by the wife of his master. And Joseph is waiting there in the prison that there is nothing else that he can do. 
hindi niya alam kung kailan siya lalaya. Okay? He cannot go out of the prison. He cannot appeal to his sentence. He cannot talk to any friend. You know, and he certainly cannot escape you know, from that prison. He's stuck in an Egyptian prison. It's far away from his home in, uh, <clears throat> in Canaan where his family have thought that he already is already dead. And while he was in jail, you know, there were two men well, two, with two dreams and there were two interpretations. So that's the whole uh, picture of chapters 40 and 41. And he's about to discover that his two years in prison you know, is not wasted because God is going to unfold once again the blueprint you know, of his life the future that God has for him and that God is the one, uh, the only one who knows about his future. Uh, remember what I've said in, uh, in session, uh, I think that was last week that, or in the, the previous Sunday, that we don't discover God's will. It's God's will who discovers us, right? And so here in Genesis 40, 41, it's quite a long chapter with 57 verses, but we can summarize the whole chapter with four words. Dreams, interpretation, plan, and promotion. Pharaoh had dreams. Uh, those are, you know, uh, are scary one, you know, and, uh, and weird dreams. And, and, and nobody could interpret, you know, from his palace about his dream. And Joseph was the one who gave a, a very unique and a powerful and uh, straightforward interpretation of, of that dreams. And, and after that, Joseph gave a plan uh, to Pharaoh and Pharaoh gave him a promotion. So that's the bird's eye view of Genesis chapter 41. And we can see that it is ultimately about the unlikely path that led Joseph you know, from and this is what we always quote, you know, and you can see this over and over again, maybe in social media, from prison to palace, right? That became very famous, uh, you know, phrase, from prison to palace. It talks about promotion. And in any chapter in Genesis, you know, this is the only chapter that really reveals the sovereignty of God, how powerful he is, and it reveals the will and the plan of God for this young man named Joseph. And when did it happen? What's the timetable? It was 20 years. Okay? Uh, meron bang uh, 20 year old dito na nakasama natin or nanonood? You know, it's quite a, you know, I'm not talking about the age, but it's it's just like a, a span of years that passed by from the time that he went out of the prison. 20 years is a very long time. Uh, a lot of things can happen within two decades, right? In 20 years, you can get married and start a family. In 20 years, you can move on with your life. In 20 years, you can start a career. In 20 years, you can become a wealthy person. In 20 years, you can even get famous, right? And in 20 years, you can be on the top of the world. You can be on the top of the mountain that you have reached you know, your, your success. But... Here's one thing that you can do in 20 years. And what is that? You can't erase a guilty conscience. Hindi mo kayang mabura yung mga mali or something that is wrong within your conscience. Because conscience is an unusual thing. It's the moral barometer it's it's the it's the measurement of the heart that senses what we have done wrong in the past or even during the present and let me say that everyone has a conscience i have a conscience you have a conscience and it is not a matter of religion or education or geography where you come from it's not a a matter of culture okay but it is you know, it is a, if you believe that you were born in a family, you know, uh, of the human family, you were born with a conscience. And it is part of God's plan, you know, for you. All of us have been created 
with body, soul, and spirit, and conscience is part of our being. And in most cases, conscience is good, is a good gift because your conscience can keep you out of trouble. You know, yung mafeel mo bang parang merong, you know, parang merong nagsasalita inside of you that you don't want to do that, okay? Don't think about that. Stop doing that, okay? That's your conscience. And it's not the same as the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit really convicts us of our sin, pero magkaiba ang conscience uh, siya sa banal na spirito. And it doesn't have the power to compel your behavior, right? Your conscience has, doesn't have that power you know, to, to compel, to control your behavior. Conscience is like a street light, okay? Like a, or like a traffic light, which has red, yellow, and green. And when... Uh, and when that when the green flashes or the red or the yellow or especially the red you can still go out or run out if the red light is on but you know that you have done something wrong most of the times i've been charged beating the red light even though unintentionally na hindi ko intentional na ginawa yun, okay so conscience is like that you know that you have done something wrong you know against your will or even against the will of God. Again, you know, I like to quote Mark Twain. He said, a clear conscience is a sure of a bad memory. Okay? And he is totally true about that or right about that. And perhaps the brothers of Joseph uh, thought that the passing of time would remove their guilt. Na lumipas na yung panahon, 20 years, akala nila hindi na sila makakaramdam ng guilt you know, uh, in their conscience, in their hearts. And after all, they hadn't seen their brothers for a long time. They haven't heard of Joseph because they thought that you know Joseph was dead already. Remember, they threw him in the pit, right? And they drug him out, kinuha ulit nila, and then they sold him to the traders in the desert. And, uh, and the traders sold Joseph as a slave. And then, uh, you know, and then that's it. And, and certainly, they assumed that, they, that he was dead already. You know, and why not? That was usually happened because slaves didn't have a long lifespan. Kapag, uh, kapag sila'y naging slave, alright, hindi malayo na magkaroon sila ng mahabang buhay because sila'y alipin, sila'y alila ng isang master. So they really thought that Jacob, that Joseph, was gone already. So their assumption was probably right. And whatever moral judgment might made, uh, but they couldn't bring Joseph back. Hindi na nila may babalik si Joseph. And would certainly never see him again. But we all know, Joseph wasn't dead. Hindi pa po siya patay. He's still alive. And he was there inside the palace, serving his master. And from this story, we're going to be surprised and we're going to be amazed of the turn of the events that took place in his life. So way down in Egypt, hundreds of miles away from his land uh, in Canaan, you know, Joseph has risen to be the prime minister of Egypt. And he became the second most powerful person, you know, probably during that time, probably during, uh, in the world during that time. And his brothers doesn't have any clue about what happened in his life. But they are about to find out. And through it all, God will awaken their guilt. Bubuhayin, mabubuhay yung, yung guilt na, na, na itinago for, for two decades, for two years. In their conscience. Okay? And now we're going to shift gears. We're going to level up a, a bit and take a look in the mirror and ask this another question. First one, the first Sunday, I ask you, you know, why were you born? So last week, I asked, who are you? And so today, this is the question for all of us. Are you willing to face your past? And that's the title of my message today. Are you willing to face your pa past? You know, we have all our past. Marami tayong mga nakaraan. Whether they're good or they're bad. And... I always say that you cannot go back to live in the past. 
you can't go back to change your past. But sooner or later, you can do something, you know, to, as you remember all of those things, you can do something right now, not to change the past, but to change the course of your future. And the Bible has much to say about retribution. Maraming binabanggit ang Lord about retribution, about revenge, about paying back. You know, and most of the times this is uh, our attitude towards uh, towards those uh, people or person who have who have done something wrong. You know, against us. You know, it's time for me to. It's time for you to pay back what you have done to me. Ganun lagi yung attitude natin, no? You know, time of re- revenge. Ito yung ito yung panahon ng uh, ng uh, paghihiganti, okay? But the Bible talks about re- retribution, you know. And uh, Exodus 21 verse 23 to 24, it says that a life for a life, a knife for a knife, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand. A foot for a foot, you know, grabe, no? Those words are very heavy, you no? Know? And and the two of the most famous Bible verses speaks about revenge or retribution in Numbers 32 verse 23. Be sure your sin will find you out. And then there's another in Galatians 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows or sows, you know, he will also reap. Okay? So, as we go back to the story of Joseph, the brothers have been sowing, you know, for a long time. Ang dami nilang itinanim, you know, kay Joseph. Na yung pagkakataong yun, probably sobrang, sobrang nasakta na si Joseph. He has been hurt. He's been so much, probably, yung, yung hatred niya towards his brother ay napakalakas or napakalake, no? And then probably Joseph is saying, now is the time to reap. You know, you're going to reap what you have sown into my life. But let's go back to their story. Nine years have passed since Joseph became the prime minister. Okay, After 20 years coming out of the prison, and now he became the prime minister of Egypt, everything has happened exactly as he said yeah, about the interpretation of the dream of the Pharaoh, that there's going to be seven years, bountiful years, it's going to be a seven years of harvest, and it's going to be seven years of living in, in, a, in, a, in a prosperous season, but it's also going to be a seven years of famine or drought, okay? So we are now in the two years uh, into the seven lean years or the last years. Uh, of of uh, you know of famine, and they are very very bad indeed, because at this time Joseph is already thirty nine years old, and so there is a great famine that takes holds of the whole Middle East, uh, and in Canaan Jacob hears that there's lot of food, okay, in Egypt, and so that's why he sent his son to Egypt to buy some food. And the story shows before us that in Genesis 42 and 43 that everything rests upon the story of what we're going to talk about today. The story have no idea that, that Joseph was still alive. The brothers and all his family have no other idea na buhay pa pala si Joseph. They think that he has been dead for years. So when they stand before him, with Joseph in Egyptian dress, nakadamit siya na pang Egyptian, and he's speaking uh, uh, Egyptian by an interpreter, they have no idea who he really is. And it never crossed their mind that this might be their long-lost brother because to them, he was not a long-lost brother. To them, he was a dead one. He's already dead. And now they're going to, fa- to have to face up of what they have been doing of or what they have done to Joseph. So one question hangs in the air today. And some people bothered, you know, siguro probably uh, very familiar na po sa inyo itong story na ito. And maybe you have already asked this question because uh, you know, some people have bothered uh, that Joseph doesn't need, you know, 
uh, or Joseph does not immediately identify himself to his brother. Hindi niya pinakilala uh, kagad yung kanyang sarili. Why would he do that? Hindi niya kagad ipinakita kung sino or pinakilala kung sino siya, you know, to his brothers. And uh, maybe some people would see this as a trick, you know, from Joseph. Maybe he's tricking his family, his, his brothers, you know, and uh, it's gonna be a painful one, you know, for his brothers. And why didn't he just give them food? But hindi niya na lang sila bigyan ng pagkain, you no, know, para umalis na lang siya, just to send them away, you know. And why not say, no, but hindi niya na lang sabihin, I am your brother, you know. I'm good to see you guys. I'm the one that you have thrown out. I'm, but I'm not slave anymore because I'm now the prime minister of Egypt. Pwede niya naman yung sabihin. Okay? Pero at first, he didn't do it. Right? And um, the answer to our questions, you know, comes in two parts. And the first one, Joseph wasn't interested merely in their physical needs. Yes, there was a need in the family, the need for food, the need to live, you know, by the aid of food, right? Kasi kung walang pagkain, paano sila mabubuhay? But Joseph was not interested, you know, by that. Joseph was interested about reconciliation. And that is the whole message. The main message for today, we're going to talk about that, you know, the message of reconciliation. From this Sunday, from today, and then the second part of this, the continuation of this, will be on the next Sunday. Okay? But, you know, he wanted true reconciliation. And through all the years in Egypt, uh, during the years of his rise to power, he never forgot. Okay? He never forgot. Hindi niya nakalimutan yung kanyang, kanyang matandang ama, kanyang tatay na matanda na. He never stopped thinking also of his brothers and also his you know, his youngest brother, Benjamin. And he never disowned his family, you know, of his birth. And deep down in his heart, Joseph was no Egyptian. He's not an Egyptian. He's still a Hebrew, you know. And in his heart, he's still the son of Jacob. He's still the grandson of Isaac. He's still the great-grandson of Abraham, Right? And if he just gave them food, kung binigyan niya lang sila ng pagkain and send them away, there could be no true reconciliation. Probably walang, mga, walang reconciliation na mangyayari if Joseph just sent them away. And so that's the first uh, uh, answer probably to our question. Na bakit hindi niya na lang, siya, niya na lang sila you know, paalisin or to, to, yeah, to send them away? And the second one is Joseph wanted to see the family put back together. And that's the reason why he wants to commune and to invite his brothers you know, to his place. But that required a change of heart by his brothers. And he had to get some questions answered. Do they still hate me? Probably in, Jacob's, uh, in Joseph's mind, no? uh, nasa isip niya, galit pa rin ba sa akin ang aking mga kapatid? Or have they truly repented of what they have done wrong? Or do they even want me in the family again? Gusto pa rin ba nila akong maging part ng kanila, ng, ng aming pamilya? And those are hard questions. You know, those are heavy ones. So Joseph takes the hard road of hiding his identity, hiding his true identity so that his brothers could reveal their own hearts to him. Para makita talaga ni Joseph yung totoong puso ng kanyang mga kapatid. And he wanted them back in his life. But did they want him back in their lives? Gusto ba nilang bumalik si Joseph sa kanilang buhay? So, there were series of tests in Genesis uh, 42 and 43. So, those are the two chapters in this message. And God used them to awaken their guilt conscience. Again, we're talking about, about conscience here. You know, of, of, of his brothers. And here is a list that will help us to see them clearly. Okay? So, in Genesis 42, 1 to 5, there is the loss of prosperity in the famine. Okay? They lost everything, the food, the food and everything. So, there is a harsh treatment by Joseph following after that uh, in verses 6 to 14. And then there is the three days that brothers, that he sent his brothers into prison. And then there's the breaking of the family as Simeon is left behind in Egypt. 
kasi pinabumalik yung kanya mga kapatid para daling sa kanya yung bonsung kapatid niya na, na si Benjamin. And there's a demand to bring Benjamin to, the, to Egypt and then there's a strange uh, case of the returned money in the last uh, portion of chapter 42. So the famine forced the brothers to go back to the one or to the one the, the, to the one place that they never wanted to go back. And that's Egypt. And probably that's the place na hindi na nila gustong puntahan. Okay? And when Jacob told his sons to go to Egypt to buy food, you can imagine probably how they were looking to each other. Siguro tumitingin sila sa isa't isa, ayoko pumunta doon. I don't want to go back to Egypt. You know? Maybe there's a trauma already. Why? Because Egypt, that's the, the place where they sent Joseph many years ago. In Egypt, that's the last place that they wanted to go. And I'm sure they said to each other, we will never go back to Egypt. I don't want to go back there. But they need to get food so that they will get or that they will stay alive. And they have to go to that place. But, you know, they need to do that so that they may be healing. You know, and to be healed from their guilt past, they must go back to Egypt. So there are two turning points of these two chapters. And number one is the confession of sin. In uh, uh, this, the first turning point comes after they spend three days in the prison. All right, nung nasa loob sila ng prison cell, they have came to that realization of what they have done wrong. In verse 21 of chapter 42 of Genesis, Then they said to one another, In truth, we are guilty concerning our brothers in what we saw, the distress of his soul. When he begged us, and we did not listen, and that is why this distress has come upon us. Now, during the time when they were in prison, they are on the road to repentance. That's the path that they are going to take in. And during the three days that they spent in the prison, I believe that the Holy Spirit is pushing their memory so that they would connect what happened in the past. Uh, that's about casting their brothers into the pit. And with their current situation in Egypt, and it is interesting what they remembered. Not just that they hated, that they hated uh, their brother Joseph. Not just they plotted against him. Remember, there's a conspiracy. You know, there's a plan to kill him. There's a you know uh, the the plan of betraying him, and not just throwing him into the pit, right? And they remember probably the screamings of Joseph while he was uh, in the pit, and remember uh, last. Uh, a week, I guess, that they were eating, right? They were eating while Joseph was in the pit. Uh, oh no, that, that was the, the first Sunday uh, that I've talked about the, this uh, series. Um, you know, nakuha pa nilang kumain while Joseph was in the pit, screaming for help, shouting for help, and, uh, and those memories came back after two decades. It all, you know, comes back to them. And though it was so hard, it was so painful, this was absolutely necessary. Now, let me say this. The Holy Spirit has connected their past sin with their present suffering. Yung mga nagawa nila dati, the Holy Spirit is the one who's connecting the things that they have done in the past and then their present situation or suffering. So, uh, friends uh, and family you know, of this church, let me say this with all my heart. If you want to get better, if you want to get better in any other area, and most of all in your relationship within your family, if you want to get better, the first step is, you know, is always, is always saying, I'm sorry. Admit that you're wrong. Admit that you did wrong. Just saying, I am sorry. Start blaming other people. Start making excuses. But if you want true reconciliation within your family, within your household, it's time to say sorry. It's time for true repentance to come forth 
and that is the first step you know on the road to reconciliation repentance by saying sorry and then the second one after confessing their sin there's the recognition of God's hand and this happens on the way back home when they discover the silver in their sacks remember pinauwian sila ni Joseph right ng mga pagkain and inside of their packs right the silver or the payment was inside of their sacks and this was the silver that they have taken you know to Egypt to buy grain and Joseph gave them the grain they wanted and secretly put the silver back in their sacks to appear that they have you know that they had somehow stolen the grain okay yun yung gustong palabasin dito na sila nagnakaw and so no wonders the brothers were terrified in verse 28 of chapter 42 and at this uh, at this their hearts failed them and they turned trembling to one another saying what is this that god has done to us anong anong nangyayari sa atin you know ngayon and this is big because it is the first time that the brothers mentioned the name of God. And this is the only time that they've mentioned God's name. In all the evil that they did in the past, God was pushed to the edge so that they would have to think about Him. And now, at last, they have to admit the truth. Kailangan na nilang tanggapin yung katotohanan. First, they have to admit their sin. And second, they see God's hand that is at work. So now as things turned against them in Egypt, the Holy Spirit is like telling them, remember what you did to Joseph? No. This is connected to that. Natatandaan nyo ba yung mga ginawa nyo kay Joseph? Lahat ito. Okay? It's like what you sow is what you reap. Right? So now, they know that they did wrong and now they know that God is bringing it to light. Because I believe that the wound the wound must be clean before healing can begin. Okay? Kailangan maging malinis muna yung sugat bago magkaroon ng paghihilom. And repentance is like that. It's like cleaning the wounds so that it can completely become healed. Okay? And one sign of true repentance is when they tell you something that you didn't already know. Because true repentance always involves coming clean, yung maging malinis. And coming clean means owning up the whole pattern of the wrongdoing. Inaako mo lahat ng pagkakamali. You're not making excuses anymore. You're not shifting blame to other people anymore. And it's very hard for us to come to this place of honesty with God and with others. And for most of us, it's a continual battle, right? It's hard to be honest. It's hard to, you know, to commit or, or to, to, to confess our sins honestly. It's very hard for any of us to say, I am guilty. You know, I was wrong. But for 20 years, the brothers had covered up, you know, their sin and their guilty conscience. For 20 years, naungkat, bumalik, you know, at handa na silang i-expose yung kanilang pagkakamali. And, and But now, God is using Joseph to awaken them to what they have done. And so far, the Holy Spirit has opened their eyes to the point where they see clearly what happened 20 years ago is somehow connected to what is happening to them, you know, today. So when they go back to Jacob, to their fathers, and tell him that they must bring Benjamin to Egypt, naturally, he doesn't want to say, you know, he, he, da, he, he won't agree. Hindi siya papayag. Because Benjamin is the only one that left, that was left for him. His youngest son. Tapos mawawala pa sa kanyang paningin. In Genesis chapter 36 verse 42, Joseph is gone. Simeon is gone. Now you want to take Benjamin from me too? Ito yung binanggit ni Jacob. So you can't blame Jacob, you know, for feeling that way. Remember that he thinks Joseph is dead already. And no one has idea, has any idea that the man is still in Egypt. He's still living and in fact, he got promoted in Egypt. And so they go back to Egypt with Benjamin. Pumayag na yung kanya na yung tatay. But they're very afraid. 
of what they are going to face. So when they get there, nothing makes sense. The table has been set for a great banquet, parang isang malaking fiesta. And Simeon was released from prison. And then Joseph entered the whole banquet. It's like a party. And seeing his, his youngest brother, his baby brother Benjamin for the first time, it over in, uh, in over of 20 years, okay? First time in 20 years that he saw his brother back. And he's so overwhelmed with emotion that he had to leave. He became very emotional. That he came, he, he, he needs to leave the banquet because he's kind of crying. You know, gusto niya nang umiyak. And, uh, but he need, to com- he need to maintain his composure. And so he came back, you know, to the banquet. In verse 30 and 31 of chapter 43, Then Joseph hurried out for his compassion. For his, pa- for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out. And as the banquet begins, the brothers noticed something strange. Meron silang napuna. They were seated around the table in, in, in the order of their, of their birth. Okay? Nakaupo sila around the table according to their birth order. So how could that be? Sinong nakakaalam nun? No Egyptian could know a thing like that. And for sure, something big is about to happen here. And then there's only one final detail that is remaining. When the food came, okay? When the food was brought in to the banquet, si Benjamin, he received five times. He received five times as much as his brothers, and because he was Joseph's only full brother, remember, siya lang ang kanyang totoong uh, kapatid, you know, sa nanay, sa nanay nila na si Rachel. So, but that too, that too was a test. Will they allow God bless, uh, bless other more than them? So ngayon, itetest ulit ang kanilang puso. Maiingit ba hulit sila ngayon kay Benjamin? Because Benjamin received five times greater than them, than, than what they have received. So this going back to the problem of envy, yung ingit, you know, that started the, the whole uh, deadly, you know, circle or process of this relationship, you know, in their family. Envy caused them to turn against Joseph. But now they rejoice because they're united with, it, with each other. And it doesn't matter if Benjamin receives more than everyone has enough. And if we stand back and look at the story, we can ask, how does God begin to awaken the guilty conscience of this, of the brothers of Joseph? And how, how does it exactly as Joseph does here by forcing us little by little to face the consequences of the past? And that is rarely easy. It is always painful. It is almost always painful. Remember, Jesus told the story of a young man who inherited, who, who got all the portion of his, of his inheritance from his father, squandered the money, wasted the money, go into, into far countries, spend his, his uh, fortune on wine, on, on, on women, on partying. And, uh, and, so many, and so many sins have discovered that he had he had friends along by, but when the time that he doesn't have any money at all uh, anymore, he doesn't any have friends uh, as well, and uh, and that's the story of the, the the lost son or the prodigal son, right? And uh, it is it is noteworthy, and we can take note that in this story that Jesus told that there was a famine also in the land where that lost son was, right? And God oftentimes used famine to bring us back to our senses. Most of the times, ginagamit ng Lord yung mga famine, uh, yung mga such problems and trials and tribulations of life to bring us back to our senses. Because in that story of the prodigal son, that son came back to his sense or to his senses. And we are not told exactly how long it took, but the only suffering 
the only that his suffering slowly brought him around you know to his father and anything that brings us to our senses must be for our own good para sa atin yon kapag nakita at nakita natin yung ating mga maling ginawa it's for our own good it's for our own sake you know and as we ponder the joseph the story of joseph that we may wonder why it took so long for the brothers to come back to their sentence to 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 their senses it's it took them for so long to realize their guilt the guilt you know their wrongdoings against their brothers and we can answer that question in two ways and i'm going to end with this you know first one god orchestrated the events so that joseph was in the right place at the right time. Inorchestrate ito ni God para, you know, para si Joseph ay mapunta doon sa tamang posisyon at sa tamang panahon. Because if the brothers had come to their senses while Joseph was in prison, walang reconciliation na mangyayari. It would not be possible. Walang difference mangyayari. Joseph had to be the prime minister at the moment when the famine came and the brothers arrived for these events to play out. Joseph has to be at the right time and at the right place for the reconciliation to take place. For 20 years, they buried their memories. For 20 years, they have fought against a guilty conscience, right? For 20 years, they have gone, they had gone on as if the past didn't matter. But when the right moment came, they've heard again the sound of their brother crying. They're crying out from the pit and they could not escape of what they have done. And aside from that, the brothers were not ready until now to face the consequences of their own sin. And... Um, in our attempts to help people, we can intervene too soon. Kung gusto nating tulungan, you know, yung ibang mga tao, uh, most of the times, napakaaga ng ating uh, uh, intervention sa ating pagtulong. If we have seen the prodigal son the day before he came to his senses, we would have said, he's ready to come home, right? But what if the father in that story had gone after his son uh, and tried to bring him back one day early before he came back to his sense, senses. The son would have said, Marahil pwede niyang sabihin, no? That if only you have left me alone for one more day, I would, made, I would have made all my money back because I was investing in the piggery. You know, kung isang araw pa bago pa ako pumunta or bago mo ako mahanap or hanapin, no? I could spend that day uh, you know uh, in uh, in my for my money to get to to grow bigger and I would invest that in any other business so that my pagmamalaki mo ko but it's not the whole we know that it's not the, the whole story or the picture you know have shown us we cannot help a prodigal too soon and it was not only the son came to his senses that he decided to return home that has to happen to every prodigal son and daughter today. It cannot be predict predicted and forced. Um, I want to appeal to those young person here. If you've been running away for so many years, so many times, um, I'm not saying if you're running away you know, from your family, away from your parents, this is not the time to go back. To the prodigals out there, the sons and daughters, it's time to come home. But I can't force you doing that. You will come back to your senses later on. It is the Holy Spirit that will speak to you to come back home. And when you come back home, the arms of your father and of your mother will always be ready to receive you. If you've been running away from God for so many years, it's the arms of God that is ready to accept you. Remember, it's not about you. It's about His love over you. So brothers and sisters, repentance is a work of God in our hearts.
yun yung gawain ng Panginoon sa ating mga puso. So if you come a day too soon, the prodigal will always think, with one more day, I would have figured out a way to solve my problems. But brothers and sisters, it's not your job to figure out things. Okay? You need to go back in full and true repentance. And things will get better. So I have two questions as, as I end this message. You know, and these questions, I'm going to leave this uh, to you. Iiwan ko po ito sa inyo because I have to cut this message uh, from this uh, uh, part. And we're going to continue this on next Sunday. But please take note of these two questions. What if, like Joseph, you have been a, the victim of mistreatment at the hands of others? of others or other people. No, no, kat, na, what if nakatulad ka ni Joseph na that you have experienced mistreatment, all right, that people didn't treat you well? So, what if you too have been betrayed? You know, if you have been abused, you know, if you have been falsely accused, no? anong gagawin mo? How can you awaken the guilty conscience of your tormentors or your accusers pa paano mo gigisingin yung kanilang uh, konsensya okay yung kanilang kaisipan sa kanilang mga maling ginawa you can't do that hindi mo kayang gawin yun like Joseph only God can do that okay it's not payback time this at this season uh, uh, at this very moment okay you can't say that it's it's not about revenge. If people turned, uh, if people have done things against you, it's not for you to make a revenge. Okay, it's only God. God can only do that. God can only turn those hearts, you know, of people who have done things, uh, who have done uh, 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 things against you. So that's the first one. Okay, because no one can force another person to repent. I cannot force you to repent. I cannot say, oh, mag-repent ka na, magsisi ka na. Diba? I cannot force you doing that. Only God can bring another person around. You know, uh, only the Holy Spirit can speak to you, you know, powerfully that you can come to that point of realization that you have done something wrong. Repentance is a gift from God. So if you're like Joseph, do what he did. Just serve the Lord where you are. Remember last uh, topic, last, last Sunday, you can serve God anywhere if you would know who you are. So, grow where you planted. Bloom where you have been planted. And wait on God's timing. Wait on God's favor. You know, and, and I want you to let go of the past and move forward with God. I know that's, that would not be probably easy for you. You know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's easy letting go of the past. So what if, the, the second question, what if, like Joseph's brother, are burdened with a guilty conscience? You know, paano naman kung katulad ka ng mga kapatid ni Joseph, that you have this heavy conscience right now that is bothering your spirit and your heart. But here's the good news of the gospel. Christ came to save you. Christ came to save sinners like us, like you and like me. And though your sin may be, uh, be as scarlet, you know, as crimson, as red, you know, you shall be white as snow. So come to Christ. Run to the cross. Come back to God. Take hold of the Son of God who died for you because the door in the Father's house, you know, are widely open to accept you if you will just run to Him. If you will just come to Him, you will not be turned away. And meanwhile, you know, at the banquet hall, during the party, the curtain is about to rise. And, they, and then they still don't know what Joseph, that Joseph is still alive. They don't have any idea that he's standing in front of them. And, but they are about to find out. So, this is going to be an amazing journey as we talk about later on, you know, next week of what 
happened next okay so next week will be the part two of this message and we're going to close this story of joseph on how we're going to close the the series of the family on the, the family series on how we're going to be set free by the power of god through repentance reconciliation and confession so may i invite you to bow your heads and, and let's pray Lord, uh, it's been an amazing journey uh, for all of us who have been, you know, following this uh, series of purpose, identity, and now we're talking about repentance. And we know that repentance is a gift from you. That you are giving us an opportunity, Lord, to come back to you. We've been running away for so many years. We have lost our a relationship with our family members because of guilt and shame because of envy because of jealousy because of hatred we have been devastated and and have been destroyed by the schemes of the enemy maraming ginawa ang kaaway to you know to to destroy us to kill us and even to you know to for us not to let go of the past. Yes, Lord, maraming nangyari in the past. Hindi ko man po ito alam, pero Ikaw lamang ang nakaalam ng lahat, Panginoon, na nangyari sa bawat pamilya ang naririto ngayon. Most of them probably are painful ones. Most of them, Lord God, ay hindi na ulit. We cannot go back para maitama ito. But Lord, this time, it's good for us to talk about this, that we can do something for us to face the future. Because there can be healing through reconciliation. The wounds can be healed in our family, in our relationship with our brothers and sisters, with our parents, or with our family members na for so many years have been have been taking hold of us. Lord, kinikim-kim namin yung galit, yung puot, yung sama ng loob. But this moment, Lord, this Sunday morning, as we pray together, Holy Spirit, I invite you to talk and to speak to each one who's been seeing and watching and hearing this video broadcast. Talk to them. Speak to them. Brothers and sisters, if there's any hatred, if there's any bitterness in your heart right now, probably you're like Joseph. You want revenge. You want to you want them to pay back, you know, for what they have done wrong. But remember it's not your part. God will do it. God will bring them back to their senses. The only thing for you to do is to pray for them. Pray for them and let God do the rest. Or maybe you're like the brothers of Joseph that somehow you've been an instrument of mistreatment. You know, you have done things against your brothers and family members. This is now the time for you to confess your sin and make things right. And the grace of God is so much over you so that you can have the power to do it. So Lord, I extend my hands over my brothers and sisters who are, who are going through lots of situations today, dealing, Lord, with, with reconciliation in their family. So Lord, I declare healing right now and restoration. And may, may the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, kindness be upon every household represented here today. So thank you for your grace and your power and for your loving kindness that whenever we come back to you, your arms are ready, always ready to accept us and to embrace us. So we thank you, Father God, and this is all our prayers. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and everybody.
we say. Amen. 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 God bless you, brothers and sisters. I'm going to see you again next Sunday.